This video will cover the cleaning procedure for the small 50 pump. The required cleaning materials that will be needed are a water source such as a garden hose, dish soap, and a sponge or Scotch-Brite pad. You should also have some form of a lubricant such as silicone spray. You will also need the included cleaning balls and the 24 mm wrench. You can also use an adjustable wrench. We first need to remove all of the excess material from the pump. Water is added to the hopper and the material is pumped into buckets for disposal. Never run water through the pump by itself. Soap must be added to the water when cleaning the pump. If you're using a non-reactive material, such as an adobe clay, you can cover the material in the hopper and print the next day without having to clean the pump system. Try to cover the end of the hose as well, so the material does not dry out. You can only go approximately five days at most before a full cleaning is needed. The top layer of the material in the hopper must be sealed against plastic or a trash bag to retain its moisture. If you are using a reactive material, such as cement, the pump must be fully cleaned right away after using it. The pump speed is set at 35 at the start of cleaning. It can be set higher as the pump is emptied of solid material. The next step is to run a cleaning ball through the hose. Undo the cam lock and insert the ball into the hose, then reattach the cam lock fitting. Make sure that there is enough soap and water in the pump to push the cleaning ball through the hose. Before taking the hose and stator off, we need to lubricate the stator. For best results, use a silicone-based spray. This should be sprayed into the hopper at the stator's input. The pump should be run for about 15 seconds so the silicone fully lubricates the stator. Now we will detach the hose and run water through it until it is fully cleaned. Continue washing the hose until clear water comes out. Make sure to not loose the cleaning ball. The next step is to fully disassemble the pump and clean all of the remaining parts. You must unplug the pump from its power source before disassembly. Use the wrench to undo the bolts that secure the stator. If there is still water in the hopper, take care not to get wet. Make sure all of the material is removed from the reducer. Cement can harden inside, making the reducer unusable in the future if not fully cleaned. The rotor needs to be taken out of the stator. If the rotor is left in water over a long period of time, it can rust. Here we are putting the stator into a vise and using a steel rod to take the rotor out. A cloth is used to not damage the paint on the stator. After the rotor has been taken out, wash out any remaining material in the stator. While waiting for the stator to dry, you can clean the rest of the machine. Again, make sure that the machine is fully unplugged from a power source before continuing. Remove the paddle and the plug to wash the rest of the machine. You can push out the plug from the inside of the hopper. You can use a Scotch-Brite pad or a sponge to clean off any remaining material. A rag or washcloth can be used as well. Before reassembling the rotor and stator, make sure that there is no water on them to prevent rust. 
Lubricate the stator with silicone spray. The rotor is inserted into the side that is conical. The discharge side is flat. Do not insert the rotor on the flat side. You can now insert the rotor. It should not be difficult to put in. If there is resistance, use more lubricant. Insert the rotor until it is flush on the other side. The bolts on the stator should be slightly making contact as shown here. Do not over tighten them. As the stator is used over time, it will wear down slightly. You will need to periodically tighten these bolts, otherwise there will be a pressure drop in the system. Do not tighten these bolts if the rotor is not inserted. When the rotor is out of the stator, the bolts will spin freely. The stator can be reattached to the pump easier if a second person is helping to hold the paddle in place. While holding the parts in position, attach the bolts to secure the stator and reducer. Make sure that the stator is properly seated to the hopper and reducer. There should be no more water in the hopper. Reinsert the plug. Place the safety grate back on and power on the pump. The pump should be run at a slow speed, 10 on the display, for about 5 seconds to evenly distribute the lubricant inside the stator. If the purple stator rotates, the two securing nuts are not tight enough. Turn the pump off and tighten them further. This video has covered the full cleaning process of the small 50 pump. To watch the operational video, please visit the link in the video description.